for a new opportunity to listen to the Word of God. And I think that at this time, after meeting Pastor uh, Dexter uh, some years ago, every one of us is happy to have him back and is ready to listen to the Word of God. He tells us sometimes beautiful uh, testimonies, but uh, nothing is greater than to have a testimony that you can see and you can touch. Yeah. And this evening, I would like to ask Dr. Noel two or three questions. We, we were always delighted to hear him telling us about his return to the Lord. Uh, and he's free to tell us again, but I would like to have two or three specific questions. Uh, how is your faith, your relationship with God since you return? You, you feel that is stronger than before? The second question would be, but you don't need to uh, to put that on your mind. But I'm, I'm saying so that you have a little uh, uh, idea. The second question would be to explain, to explain to us how come you have such a devotional spirit. When you pray, uh, it touches my heart to the depth. When you preach, I, I can wait, I can listen to you, as I said about Pastor Dexter. It is such a profound message, and you put your, hand, your heart in the message. I like to know, because you are a scientist, and that might surprise uh, many people. But now, how is your faith since you returned to the Lord? So answering your first question, Pastor, I would have to answer it by uh, saying a quick word that uh, I was born in the Seventh-day Adventist movement. My parents were Seventh-day Adventists, but I grew up with a different vision about what I needed to do in the world. And my vision was warped because my preceptors at the time uh, emphasized achievements, achievements financially, achievements with academics and other things without uh, with academics and other things without the uh, focus on the Bible and the gospel and um, again you know I went to Seventh-day Adventist school mind you and again the teachers I had were very very uh, uh, involved people in the church but somehow this is the message I took home and I left the church and I became very famous and uh, in my field I published and I gave lectures I actually uh, uh, trained young physicians and I felt at the pinnacle of the achievement uh, uh, in uh, the academic world and financially I also did very well and I was what you would say in, in, in the uh, common jargon wealthy one thing I did not understand is that this did not have the potentials and the power to touch the soul. And I fell into a way of life where I was miserable. And people would encounter me, my misery would not be left to me alone. I would have to share the misery with them. This was the way I was. You would not want to meet that Dr. Noel. Trust me, a lot of the young physicians actually uh, were kicked out of my program because I was looking for trouble. And the Lord actually taught me and brought me in a powerful way. I didn't come uh, voluntarily. I came kicking and screaming, but the Lord brought me in a way that he made me understand this was the time. And the way, uh, the first ringer of that was at the pinnacle of my wealth and as I had so much money, you'd walk into a, uh, a marina and, and I was a, a boater by, by nature and I love boats, I still do. And the largest yacht you would see would be Noel's. And again, you know, I was proud of that and this was a, a very, very important thing to me. And 
my accountant called me one day and says, you know what, Dr. Noel, I have, we have to file bankruptcy. I said, what is this? I thought I was wealthy. And the Lord had a way of teaching me, you can have all the wealth today and not have it tomorrow. What do you take with you? I mean, what is going to carry you through this life and the next one? And since, and little by little, there were other experiences. I won't waste too much time, Pastor. But again, the Lord had brought me back to the church because these were the roots that were going to make the difference. And ever since, you said, what has kept me going? This is what kept me going. The Lord was good enough to see that I was miserable. And he went and took me from that misery to bring me in the church. And again, uh, I, the, the, the Pastor Dexter was saying last night, you know, w what keeps you fired up? It was a similar question than what you're asking me now. Is that at first, when I was in uh, med schools teaching and so forth, what I used to say to these students is that you have to focus on the science, on what you can touch, on what you can uh, 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 explain, equations and so forth. And then all of a sudden, the, 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 the rhetoric was, was completely changed and what I had to say is that to myself that is when you are on the narrow way you are in the right way and since coming back you say what keeps uh, the uh, uh, fire uh, really going is the phenomenon that when I used to say you know everything is random it's evolution, it's this or that. And Satan did not exist. And some of the teachers uh, of my uh, general environment would say the same thing. People made up, there is a Satan. You have to be converted to know that there is a Satan. Because since my conversion, I have found obstacles upon obstacles to stay in the way that's the righteous way. And again, you know, since... I came and re I was rebaptized, Pastor. You know, I have found mendacity. I have found gossip. I have found persecution on the uh, 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 professional scale. Uh, people came from the left field to steal and to harass. These are the things that you deal with. And when I find this, I'm not discouraged. The Lord has a way of providing strength. And I know that, aha, Satan does not exist. I see him now. And because I see him, the Lord is going to be there with me. If he could come and get me where I was, he's going to be next to me every step of the way. We praise the Lord, doctor. We praise the Lord. And as I said many times, I'm looking forward to the day when you give more time to the preaching of the gospel the and the preparation of people for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. To me, I believe, as I began to know you better and better, the most uh, important uh, truth for you is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And tell us why are you so attached to this truth? Again, you know, this is one of the uh, parts of my coming back to the Lord is that um, the message was are you ready for for this world or are you ready for the world to come and it, it is a, a, a theme that came, kept coming back uh, uh, look around you look around you and I, I keep falling on on, on programmings and and, 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 and and sermons all over the world of people speaking of the second coming and it is convincing if you are even a scientist now to know that this world is going to pass away. This world will pass and we are closer and closer and as you read the prophecies you see all the signs of that happening. And, and there was something I cannot explain pastor. It's like a fire, an explosion to tell me every day that I wake up, are you ready if Jesus came today? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the miracle you performed in our dear brother, Noel. Lord, 
we are amazed because the person he talks about is no longer here. Amen. A new man in Christ, a new person Amen. that is led by the Lord Amen. is among us and we didn't see and we didn't hear any of those uh, traits of character he mentioned. And it's good because we are impressed with the love you put in his heart for you, with the knowledge of the truth that uh, you help him to get, with the, the devotion of the spirit, with the power of preaching. And we pray, dear Lord, that what you began in him, you'll take it to completion. Yes. Yes, Lord. And may he see also his dear wife embracing the truth one day. Yes, Lord. And may he see his dear daughter and, and son-in-law and, yes, and, and grandchildren coming to the Lord one day. Amen. And may we all see Dr. Noel preaching with power, not only once in a while in our church or at Venice Church, but throughout the world, because we have realized you have gifted him very richly. And we praise you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Dr. Noel, we'd like you to, to introduce uh, our speaker this evening. You may put your things yes. if you need. And um, after you do that, uh, you, you may uh, ask uh, Brother Cindy to come, Sydney, to come and sing a song of meditation. Well, we all have uh, heard of uh, the achievements of um, Pastor Dexter. And um, I, I want to share with you the impact. And you all here have been here, I'm sure, in previous presentation he had. But uh, let me share with you that he has two masters. He has a doctorate. And when he speaks, he speaks as a learned man. And I have been in circles with educated people. Trust me, I know the difference. And I, I'm impressed with that. But one of the things I'm impressed with even more is that the Lord has given him a mission. Because when he shares the word with us and the topics he chooses are topics where you cannot sit in your pew and fall asleep. And there have been other evangelistic uh, meetings where people speak about different things where you don't feel concerned. You are concerned because he brings the word of God to you directly. And this is a powerful man with a powerful message invested by God to share with us in the days that he will be with us. And um, again, I would like to ask you to pray for him as I was mentioning, that all the power on the side of the Lord are under attack. And because we are under attack because of the end of this world, we need to pray for each other, strengthen each other. And, and your prayers during his presentations are extremely important so that the word he has from God for us can be received. And at this time, you will hear a song of meditation it's the, the brother, and after that, the voice you will hear is the voice of Pastor Dr. Dexter Thomas. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hide my face While the storm howls above me And there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe till the storm passes by. 
Till the storm passes over And the thunder sounds no more And the clouds roll forever From the skies Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of the hand Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whisper, there is no use to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there is no hope and light. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise with the storm never dark in the sky. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, and the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of the hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended and the storm comes no more, let me stand in thy presence and the bright, peaceful shore in the land where the tempest never come. Lord, may I well with thee when the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of the hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Keep me safe till the storm passes by Thank you Amen amen How oh, do you guys like that Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen again till the storm passed me by. And if I could sing bass like that for a whole song, you'll call me Whitley Phipps. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Doc, Doc Noel, thank you so much for your warm, kind introduction. People told me that introductions are like perfume. You could, you could smell it, but don't drink it. Don't swallow it. <laughs> thank you. I, I'm just moved by your testimony because it reminds me of God. God's power to save the, the, the PhD and the GED, the aristocrat and the alley cat. You know, he's willing to reach down and save all of us. Amen. Amen. Pastor, you're getting some great testimonies, man. Thank you so much. So I have one more project to tell you guys about. Since I launched my book table and my marketing director is... Um, Elder Gray and Sister, Sister Susan. Um, I think I have a team of directing marketing managers. 
So I brought some, I told you about my motivational guide throughout the Bible, and it's like one paragraph where I share a motivational insight on a theme from each book of the Bible. This is my pandemic project, but here's another pandemic project that's really near to my heart. Any one of you that has preschool or kindergarten age children or grandchildren, this would be a huge asset. I partnered with, you all know Neville Peter? There's a blind gentleman that sings on 3ABN, on Hope TV. So I partnered with him, you know, because both of us could see eye to eye on a lot of things, you know? And um, we, we did, um, we did um, a project called the Little Learner's Library, Early Childhood Education Through Scripture Story and Songs. And so what we have is 40 Bible stories that teaches an educational lesson. Pretty unique project. And especially if you have grandkids or kids that, that didn't grow up in the church. It's a really clever way to teach early childhood education while including scriptural concepts through the Bible stories. So, you know, with the rainbow, we teach colors. Um, with the axe that floats from Elijah, the axe head, we teach gravity. It's a pretty, pretty unique product. And, and, for, and we have most of the songs, little one-minute songs, are um, all original. So it's, you would love it. You would love it. Um, if you don't love it, you'll get your money back if you pay extra. Um, the book of Revelation, everybody. I'm in chapter 2 right now. And I want you to stand with me. We've been exercising all night. That's good. Revelation chapter 2. And I want to read from verse 18 to about 23. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 to 23. I have just been blessed by this series myself. Verse 18 says, And to the angel of the church where? Thyatira. Write the Son of God who has, what does he have? Eyes like a flame of fire and his feet are like bronze um are like bronze he says this i know your deeds and your love and faith and service and perseverance and your deeds of late are greater than at first that's good but i have this against you that you tolerate the woman jezebel who calls herself a what? A prophetess. And, 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 and she teaches and leads my servants astray so that they do what? They commit acts of immorality. And what, what else do they do? Eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to do what? And what did she do? She did not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will cast her upon a bed of affliction and those who commit what? Adultery with her um, into a great tribulation until they repent of their deeds. Let's pray. Jesus, strong words, Lord. But I'm so glad you have strong hope with these tough scoldings and chastisement. Now bless your church tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm reading this thing, church, as you're seated. I'm reading this, right? And not only Thyatira, but I'm reading the, the other, um, the scoldings to the seven churches, and I'm cringing. I'm like, wow, these songs like harsh, stern words. He's removing lampstands. He's fighting people with swords from his mouth. He's casting them on beds of, of, of sickness and killing people's children coming like a thief i'm like good grief is this a loving god wow i mean lord you 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 you're loving and you it feels like you're threatening them it almost feels like let me let me give you a jamaican term it feels like a gunman god you're like he's threatening you if you do you better do this or else like wow where's the love where's the compassion where is the where is the, um, the, the sweet, gentle Jesus that we read about? And, and, and so so it, 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 makes me, it makes me question, where is God's love when there is judgment? When there is harsh scoldings 
You know, and, and, and what do you really do with these images coming from the one who says, um, you know, they, 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 coming from the one who's walking among the seven churches because he loves them, he's intrigued with them, he's interested in, in rebuilding them and, and healing them and uplifting them. Where's the love? And, and, I, and let me tell you what, what messes with me. You know, in, in um, Revelation 3.19, he says to Laodicea, whom that I love, I chastise. That kind of image bothers me. It bothers me because of how I grew up. Uh, it's funny, even though I'm, I'm younger than most of you, we grew up in the same generation. Uh, where, when I grew up, in fact, right now, to tell you the truth, my father would be in prison. Uh, because they gave you something in the islands called licks. You know, I, I heard one time o Oprah, Oprah opened a school in South Africa, and she heard they were, they were you know, whooping the, the kids. She, they were beating them. And, and she flew over there, and she said, you, you'll have to stop this. You'll have to stop, you'll have to stop spanking my, my, my kids. You know, it's orphanage and they're precious to me. You know, no more spanking. And the principal said, Miss, Miss Winfrey, we shall never spank these kids again. And she came back to America and then she heard a report that they still were spanking the kids. And she flew over there. She was going to, you know, fire everybody. And she said, but I heard you, you're spanking the kids. No, nope, that's not true. That's a rumor, Miss Winfrey. We have never spanked the kids. But when they act up, we beat. <laughs> we don't spank in South Africa. We beat. And, and uh, that, that's kind of how I grew up. Uh, and man, our parents were like wicked people. Because, you, you know, you had categories of beating. Th there, was, there was what you call just in case licks. So your, your mom is going to the States or to Canada and she pulls you aside and whap, 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 whap. What's that for? Just in case you act up and behave badly. It's just in case. And, 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 then, and then there was the bank account beating. You all about the bank account beating? You know, you, 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 you fought against your brother. You accidentally hit him. You know, you stole something. You made mischief. Nothing. Nothing. I'm like, wow, my parents are Americans. You know, they, they, they have become believers in children's rights. I like that. And then, you know, one month later, you just did one little thing. And then, whap, whap. You remember three weeks ago? Whap, whap. You remember a month before? Whap, whap. You call it bank account. They were saving it up. They were saving it up. Wicked parents, man. Wicked parents. And then some of them, you know what they'll make you do? They'll make you do. They, they will actually make you go get your own switch. You, wait, you all have the same parents like me? <laughs> get your own switch. And then when you're crying, when you're crying, they're like, you want me to give you something to cry for? You just did. You just did. So, so when I read this, and a lot of times your parents will spank you, and then, and then when you're crying, they're like, we are doing this because? Finish it. We'll, is that love? Keep it. You know? And, and, and so when I read Jesus is like, I scold you. I chastise you because I love you. I'm like, what? You, please don't be my parents, Jesus. Please. So it, it, it's, it's images and it troubles me. It troubles me in, in, in a world where people would prefer to hear that God is only love. It, it troubles me because we, we, want, we want to preach, especially in our postmodern age, uh, a, a God that does not destroy at all. I mean, that would be nice and gentle to preach, but it's, it's not the God of the Bible. But what do you do with it? How can he claim to be a God of love and then willing to kill kids, um, you know, throw people in bed of afflictions as we're reading. These tough words to the church of Thyatira. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? You know, let me, let me, you know when, I was, when I was doing um, theology, I, I remember, um, and growing up um, really conservative and very legalistic, uh, anything that spoke to my legalistic biases, I liked it. Anything that made God look judgmental or, or made him put people in a straight jacket if they don't shape up, then he straightened them out. I like that. You know, that's the God I was introduced to when I met Jesus. Lord have mercy. And, and, and I remember the, the professor saying, um, somebody asking the professor, well, you know, sir, um, professor, I'm struggling with theology and I'm thinking about, you know, doing another major. 
Uh, and the professor said, let me tell you something. If God calls you to do something, and you do something else, you're going to be lost. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. So I went about telling everybody that. If God calls you to do something, not, you know, shape, help them to shape up. And I remember the call Porter directed there at, at Oakwood College. He, I told him that. I said, if God calls you to do something, I was preaching that thing, boy. Um, he said, what kind of ugly rubbish is that? You know, this is an old, hard Caribbean man. What kind of ugly rubbish is that? He's, and he said something I will never forget. He said, do you think Jesus would suffer like a common criminal, die like a dog on a cross, so that we could be lost that easily? Really? If you decide that you don't want to be a preacher and you want to be a politician, God is going to ensure that your place in hell is secure. You think God is going to go through all that he did to save you and then allow you to be lost that easily. That, that stayed with me. It stayed with me because I'm like, well, well, well maybe the, the judgmental, ugly picture that I grew up with of God might, might not be so. But then I come across passages like these. You know, where you read about the judgment. You know, um, as a blind person, I have a lot of things that talk. I have a talking microwave. I have a talking clock. But there's one thing that, that talks that I wish it would just shut up. You want to guess what that is? Not my TV. No. I have a talking scale. And let me tell you all something. Technology would blow your mind. One time I stood on that scale and the thing was like, one person at a time, please. I am like, the devil is in you, scale. And I threw it out the window. I just threw it out the window. Yeah, but, but you know, you know um, uh, a few years ago, just before I came to you guys, I, I met a, a, a pastor in British Columbia, uh, Jim Gall. And Jim used to be about 250 pounds or close to 300 and then, and then I, I met Jim a couple of years after, and he was down to like 170s. He's a, he's a tall guy. I was like, whoa, what in the world did you, have you been doing? And not, 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 not only did he lose the weight, but he kept it off, right? And, and Jim, Jim shared about a, a, a lifestyle plan that he calls bright line eating. Look it up. Really, really clever. Bright line eating. A brain, brain, brain PhD um, came up with, this, with, with, with a food plan that works with your brain so that it minimizes the addictive things we put in our bodies like flour and sugar right so so jim i mean jim had lost so much weight that he could wear his wedding suit from 45 years ago i was so impressed i'm like i want that but the thing with this weight now with this with this lifestyle diet change it's simple things right um no flour i know i know all of you, Bola, Toto, Gazada, Roti, you already cursed that diet. I can tell. I can see it on your faces. You're like, forget that. That is the worst diet. Who is the idiot that came up with that idea? <laughs> no flour. Worse than that. No sugar. No sugar. And when I say no sugar, I mean no, no siva and agave. No sugar. Um, three meals a day. And, and check this, check this, check this. Um, and you have to do portion control. So you kind of weigh your food. And, and I came away with a couple of things. Came away with a couple of things. I'm telling you about the, the, the scales that I use now, right? Every day, a scale to weigh my food and a scale to weigh me, right? So that I will know if I weighed my food correctly. But, 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 so, and you could choose to weigh daily or you could choose to weigh weekly. Um... Uh, daily is really troublesome because daily messes with your self-esteem. You have to have a lot of courage to get on that scale and one day you're two pounds up, next day you're two pounds down. And, and weighing daily, what weighing daily does, it makes you revisit your diet the previous day. So you're like, man, that chocolate chip cookie really did me in. You know, you start processing. So it's, it, what it does, it keeps you accountable. You all following me? It keeps you accountable. And, 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 then, and then the food scale, look, I've been overweight all my adult life. So clearly, I have to admit, I do not have what it takes to eyeball my food. And to eyeball means I can't judge if it's the right amount. I have not done a good job. Let's be realistic. 
or else I would not have been walking around as heavy as I did. Yeah? So, so, so in, in, in surrendering and submitting to weighing my or portion control, I was saying to myself, look, look, I need a system in place so that I don't have to depend on my feelings and my judgment, which have not been helpful. You all still following? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's, that's what the judgment is about for me. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to Thyatira. That's what God's scolding is for me. That's what his word does for me. David says it this way in Psalms 119. How can a young man keep himself pure? And he answers, by taking heed according to thy word. In 105 of 119, he says, thy word is a lamp, help me somebody, unto my feet, and a light, you have it, Brother Baker, to my path. That's God's word, right? So what, what God's word does for us is you don't have to go figure out based on your feelings what is right and what is wrong. Thus says the Lord is your guide. What God's word does for you, it not only shows you the path of righteousness, but it helps you to know when you are slipping back onto the path of wrongfulness. That's my scale. That's my scale. That's my scale right there, right? And, and, and so so the, the message of Thyatira have me engaging the meaning of the judgment and, 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 and what does God's scolding and chastisement mean when you see these pictures of God and they don't look that pretty. When you see the pictures of Jesus um, um, whipping a, a, a whip together and driving people out of the temple. It doesn't look like the docile Jesus. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Let me tell you what to do with it. Let me tell you what you do with it. The, the, the people, the Bible says, that fear the judgment are the people who has no interest in walking with Jesus. The people who fear the judgment are the people who do not have an investment in growing closer and yet more closer to Christ. And, and what's amazing with the church at Thyatira is his words of condemnation, again, is the hope that he has that they can change. Every scolding is God pointing out who we could be in Christ. He says to Ephesus, get back to the first love which means they could get back there god never scores us where he don't see the powerful possibilities of our potential in christ jesus hallelujah yeah so he says to them look you guys are doing so well in fact your your works of late is even better than your works of of, of your former works keep this going but look you're tolerating evil and what i've learned what i've learned family is what you tolerate you perpetuate and that's why that's why christians that fold their hands and they stay on the sideline while evil is spreading in our society god god look look, look at the end look at the end of verse so that you don't think i'm making it up when look, look, look at what i read when he is when he is talking about the sins of jezebel he is accrediting it to them because of their tolerance of that sin. But I say to you, the rest who are in Thyatira, that's not the verse I want, um, pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he, I'm in verse 23, that reads the hearts and the minds, and I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. But listen to this. Listen to this. Every time I think about the judgment, I think about the judgment with a sense of joy. Now that doesn't make sense. Why would you think about the judgment with a sense of joy? I think about the judgment with a sense of joy because I know the judge. I think about the judgment with a sense of joy because Christ is judging me for what he has been doing through me. Hallelujah. So it gives me hope. I remember asking my young adult Bible Sabbath school class, 30 of them, and I'm asking, which one of you, if you should die right now, know for certain 
that your eternity with Jesus is secure. And um, nobody raised their hands. Nobody. And, and I felt like an absolute failure as their pastor. It means something I taught missed them. Because me personally, if I should fall down dead right on this pulpit, the next thing I will know is the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'm sure about that. No if ands, or buts. I'm sure about that. Not because I walk well, but because he walks well through me. Amen. And the life that I now live, I live according to the faith of the Son of God that died for me. Yeah? So, so, so it's not by might, it's not by power, it, but, 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 but it's by thy spirit, says the Lord. And, and I live by that. So, so, so the, the assurance of salvation, like, like Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, um, um, he said, God was in Christ. No, no, no. He became sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Who knew no sin that we could become the righteousness of God through him. In other words, I like how Auntie Ellen says it. That he took our death, which we deserve, so that we can get his eternal life that we did not deserve. He took our hell, in which he had no share, so that we could gain his heaven, in which he took our hell, in which he had no share, so that we could gain his heaven, in which we had no share. That's what Jesus did, right? So, so, so. In, in accepting his righteousness, in walking in his righteousness, I am guaranteed of my eternal life. So, so, so John 5, 24, don't speak of eternal life like it's a futuristic thing. It speaks of eternal life as happening the day you said yes to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm back to the judgment of Thyatira. So the, 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 the judgment and the scoldings of Christ are always gifts of hope and encouragement, um, sister and brother Brooks. They are always hope of encouragement. So I, I don't look, you, you know how I see the judgment? Like when Christ says, my reward is with you. And, and, and I, you know, my, in other words, he's saying, look, payday is coming. Payday is coming. I, I remember, if I, if I could tiptoe a little bit, um, in some hot waters because this is controversial a little bit but i remember when the government said that they were giving out stimulus checks most of my friends most of my conservative friends were asking where is that money coming from i want to be honest with you since i don't want to die from lying that was not my concern I'm like, if I'm going to get that money, give me that money, Uncle Sam, please. My mother told me Uncle Sam is really not my uncle. I'm like, Mommy, that is not the truth. He just sent me $1,800 for me and my family. And then, and then I, heard, I heard a few months later that another stimulus was coming. I'm like, bring it on, Uncle. Bring it on. Another stimulus? Really? You like me that much? But, but, no, but, but here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. The judgment is similar to that. That's why the Christian is excited about the judgment. The judgment is a payday. The judgment is, Chris, is, a, is a Christmas bonus. And, and, and so, so, so come judgment day, God is going to reward Christ that lives in you. Hallelujah. And give you the credit for it. Bless the name of Jesus. That's why it says uh, he became sin for us who knew no sin. That we could be the righteousness of God in him. So judgment is a time of joy. So, so the judgment not only holds me accountable like my scale does, my daily scale wig does, but, but, but the judgment also keeps me encouraged because I can also see my progress. Wow, I'm no longer 170 pounds for only being 4 feet 7 but still going to heaven. You know? No, I kept going down and that gave me hope. So, so God's scolding, God's chastisement, it, 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 it gives you a, a, an idea of where you are in Christ. It's a beautiful thing. And I now understand God is not the parents that would flog and, 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 and beat recklessly. No, 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 no. He don't punish. He disciplines. 
He don't, he don't just beat because he's in a bad mood. He, he, he brings us up to his standard so that the beauty of Christ could live through us. Hallelujah. I love that. And, and so, so this is what he is doing for the church at Thyatira. He's wanting his beauty to be seen through them. He's wanting them to get to the place where they see and they understand judgment as Christmas bonus. Looking forward to the reward. Every Christian should be excited when his life's record is closed. So Brother Baker said, make sure and sing, never part again. Or else, or else. <laughs> I never heard a dead man threaten people before. <laughs> you're a wicked dead man. I want you to know that. I, I think I like you alive more than when you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, 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 but judgment brings joy in that sense. Let, let, me, let me take a break. Let me take my break right now because I want to keep going. Um, so my question to us tonight, my question to us tonight is, what do you do when God scolds you? In other words, in other words, what do you do when you see your sinfulness? How do you get over the shame of your sinfulness to get back to the sweetness of Christ's salvation? How do you do that? Because sometimes we see our, our, our shamefulness, our sins, and it fills us with guilt and we get discouraged. What do you do? How do you get past that guilt and the shame um, to keep walking in God's love. What do you do when you, when you, when you see your, 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 your sinfulness? Who is first? Who is first? And now, now, again, you all know I like being personal, and a lot of times, for my questions, people give a little sermonette, and they say, well, the Bible says, or they say, well, every member here should believe. No, I want your story, your experience. What do you do? Who is first? Now, please, don't raise your hands, everybody together. That's not nice. One at a time, please. Who is first? Sister Stevens. I got you. How do you do the running? Amen. Amen. Great place to do running. Great place to do running. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Carol. I like that. Anyone else? What do you do? How do you get past your shame and your guilt? The scoldings. So this is Reggie. Um, Brother Reggie. Oh, yes, man. Yes. Mr. Um, Miami. Right. That's right. Well, in my case, Brother Dexter, I think about who God is. He is a God of love. Wow. And because of that, whatever the discipline is, I know for sure it is that way because it is out of love where he is applying such discipline. So instead of being worried by whether it's a little bit of hurt or whatever it is, I think in terms of it is a discipline that is meant for good. And whether it's the same day or in the days to come, it will turn out to my advantage. So with that sort of theory, I don't be worried by it. I accept it and I see it as joy. Wow, man, I love that. I love so in other words, you're saying you're saying you're saying, Brother Reggie, you can trust his hands because you know his heart. Yes. Man, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. And I, you know why I love that? I used to personally struggle with my sins and my shamefulness. And you, you'd get to the point where, where you're like Peter when he realized it was Jesus. He's like, leave me. Leave me. You don't want anything to do with me. Please, please don't waste your love on me. Leave me. Leave me. And, and so I, I would feel that way, you know. And, and what, what got me through that, Brother Reggie, is like you just said understanding who god is if god thinks i am worthy of his love and his forgiveness i'm not more righteous than god is you all follow that if god thinks i am worthy of being forgiven of being of, of being reconciled to him again i can't say no i don't deserve it that's the enemy i'm gonna grab what god gives me fill me with your grace jesus i love that who else who else three more Three more. Well, um, if you 
Bro Brother Beak. If you know that you have given yourself to the Lord, mm -hmm. you are not your own anymore. Yet still you messed up. But when you messed up, you remember like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pity them that fear him. Yeah, man. He know it, our friend, and you remember that we are just. He forgives when we ask him. Got ya. You know, you remind me of, is it Psalms 130 or 133 that says, Lord, if you, if you should mark iniquity, who shall stand? And, and, and there, there are all these beautiful places in Scripture that point to the depth of his love in spite of who we are. It, 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 sorry, two more, two more, two more. Sister Dua. Mm. Mm. Amen. Right. Wow. I love that. So, so our sister says she, she, she goes to Psalm 51. You know, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, O God. I was shaped in sin, born in iniquity. Yeah? But, but, but God put truth within my inner parts. I love that. Um, so she runs to Psalm 51 so she could experience the cleansing, the reassurance that God's love is still rich and available. Good stuff. One more. Last feedback. What do you do? Are we done to no more? All right. Let me wrap up here. Let me tell you what I love about this, 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 this scolding this chastisement this engaging of jesus with the churches just like i said before you know god i am awestruck that he is still engaging a church like this i am blown away that in spite of the wicked ways of this church he is still yearning to reach them and that gives me hope you know, I, I, I remember one time I was, I was just praying and thinking, you know, and um, how disappointed God must be of me. And, and I remember thinking about Adam. I remember thinking about David. Sister Dua just said, think about David, you know, cold-blooded murder, hot-blooded adultery, yet receives cleansing and forgiveness and second chance from God. I'm like, man, God, if you can, if you can forgive David, and what about me? But more than David, forget David. What about Adam? Because of Adam, I was born blind. Because of Adam, um, we have uh, STDs. We have wars. You know, be, because, of, because of Adam, Dr. Noel, you know, you became famous because of all the sick people around. You know what I mean? But, but you can imagine, and if God, in spite of Adam's, in spite of Adam surrendering our planet to sin, God gave him lamb skins to cover his nakedness. If Adam could get a second chance, help me somebody, then what about you and I? That's the Jesus we know. That's the Jesus who is poking us, chastising us, scolding us, getting us ready so that we can welcome the judgment with joy. That's my Jesus. So that gives me encouragement that he is constantly engaging them in spite of their shortcomings uh, and another thing that i learned if you observe with all the churches you know th th there is there is good and bad did you read that laodicea is a different story but, but but for most of these churches you know he said you're doing good here but you're messing up here and and you know all the churches to a large extent represents who we are we are a mixed bag we have good days man but we have awful days we have great moments where we are so wrapped up in Jesus, but then we have moments where we fall on our faces and we fail him. But in spite of the ups and downs, I like Proverbs 24, 16, that the righteous man falls seven times, but he rises again. Hallelujah. So, so the story is told about um, twin, and I don't know why these stories always have one bad and one good. Why can't they be two good? But I'm going with the story. One is bad, one is good. And, um, you know, the, the bad one, hyperactive, always in trouble. The good one, straight A student, 
doing his work well. The bad one drops out of high school. The good one completes. He becomes an attorney. Um, the bad one starts following a life of crime, gets in trouble, about to be in prison. The good one, the attorney, always came to his rescue. The man, he felt good, but he felt emboldened. He felt emboldened. Any action that is rewarded is, is strengthened and shall be repeated. So he, he, he took the brother's kindness for weakness. So he kept going. And, and then the brother and him, they separated. The brother went off to another place. They lost contact. And this one time, he never changed. The bad brother never changed. This one time, he got a murder rap. And he was about to face life imprisonment. Life. And, and he knew he was a goner. Knew because there was no lawyer brother around, um, nobody to help him. And then, and then they decided to try him in another city. And when he went to court and he looked up on the bench, the judge was his lawyer brother. He, a big smile came across his face. He's like, he got up. He's not supposed to do that breaking protocol. He's like, what up, bro? He got all happy and excited. And, and, and the brother was like, young man, please be seated. And the brother is like, oh, you, you, you're one of them now, huh? You got rich and switch. That's what you do, huh? Young man, please be seated. And then, at the end of the case, he got life. And the uh, bad brother, weeping, said, man, you're my twin. How could you do this? He said, I used to be your brother. But now I'm your judge. Family John, 1 John 2 and verse 1 says, Little children, sin not. But if you sin, thank you, Jesus. We have an advocate, an attorney, a lawyer with the Father, Jesus the righteous. Didn't, didn't I tell you that God gave us his righteousness for our sinfulness? Jesus the righteous pleading on our behalf. But look, look. God's call and challenge to us is let him remain your brother so that you would have joy in the judgment. Let's stand and pray, church. Let's stand and pray. Stand and pray. God, we thank you for your scolding. We thank you for the times where we get to see the darkness of our sins. Because Lord Laodicea, they don't even do that. They think they're okay. And I'm so glad that sometimes we feel discouraged, God, when we see our sins and our shortcomings. But we don't realize that that's when your spirit is with us. You are with us when we could see our shortcomings. The closer we come to Jesus is the worse we see ourselves. And I remember your word saying that when the spirit comes, he will convict us of sins. So God, thank you for showing us our sins. But more than that, thank you for showing us the Savior. And Father, we, we relish in your salvation. We bask in uh, the blessings of your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. And thank you for the joy and the judgment. God, bless us with this word tonight. And may we, may we, may we walk out of this place with confidence that our lives is hidden, hidden in Christ. And if it should end right now, will be translated when the, when the first resurrection occurs. So God bless us and keep us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. And amen and amen. So as we sing, um, as we sing 526, I want to encourage you once again, members, please support our revival by giving a kind offering, right? The box is waiting in the back for you. Um, tomorrow night and Tuesday the message is entitled stay near your yard no meetings tomorrow night or wednesday night or tuesday night sorry we'll be back on wednesday night and the message on wednesday night is entitled comforted by the resurrector you want to you want to miss that the church of Pergamos, comforted by the resurrector Send this out. They call him Jesus. He 
dismissed and we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evening. Amen? Amen. And as you go out we ask for your generous offering. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon everyone and may we live and enjoy the goodness of the Lord and may we come back on Wednesday night to enjoy more of this blessing in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Christ is all. I don't forget. <laughs>